Hello and welcome to the official Facebook page and YouTube channels of uh, Bunker Hill Sports, uh, Sports Cube, uh, Center of Excellence, and of course, Peace Taekwondo Academy. We are joined by a very, very special guest today, and she's none other than uh, Aparna Pobat. We talk about PV Sindhu's these days, we talk about uh, Saina Neva's these days, but the lady who inspired an entire nation uh, in women's badminton was none other than the person who you can see on the screen. Welcome to the show, Aparna Pobat. I'm joined by Pratik Puri, my co-host, and it's, it's lovely hosting you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, Glad so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, before, before asking anything, I mean, straight away, how is, how is life going on, ma'am? Because it's, it's never easy, especially for an athlete to deal with the things which we have been, uh, you know, experiencing for the last couple of years. It's never easy, whether we are in this particular sports or we have left it, it's never easy to stay indoors, stay uh, in, in such fashion because of the pandemic. How is life and how is back home? I think uh, touch wood, uh, there's nothing to complain about, at least at this point in time, because seemingly things are opening up and, uh, you know, we are able to get outdoors and sports has begun. And uh, I think the having the Olympics um, was a big boost uh, just to say that things will normalize and they have seemingly normalized. So it's, uh, I think there's nothing to complain, at least at this point in time. But yes, it was a tough couple of years especially for those involved with sport and uh, I'm, I'm glad it's it's almost over and hope that it does not come back in the way it did okay i'd be requesting prateek to to ask the first question because uh, uh, i mean he's, he's just sitting just on top of me so <laughs> it's better if he asks the first question <laughs> so uh, so this is the second live which uh, i'm doing with with aparna more than the uh, more than anything I can tell, right? So I mean, uh, it's 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 more about trying to interact with the players, those who are with us, and so we have few players um, in our academy, those who are taking part in uh, Fuzira and also preparing for the Asian Games as well. Um, needless to say, we have our own center of excellence where we have multiple sports going on. So now that um, our main purpose of uh, coming live with you was trying to understand. Um, how would you have dealt with such kind of um, uh, scenario if, if you were a youngster? What would have what would have been the things which we, you would have done to keep yourself going? Um, yeah, I think first of all, uh, congratulations to the athletes you know who've done really well and who are you know at the cusp of you know representing India um, at at various events. So it's always an honor to do that. And uh, I think once you've reached that level or aspiring to reach that level, there are a few um, rules that are sacrosanct, at least I think so. And they're rules that have been spoken about very, very often. Um, you know, things like giving your 100%, uh, working very hard, um, being focused, and all those good things, right? Um, but if you really break these these rules down, it boils down to some very small habits that actually matter and that actually keep you on course. And um, for me, I think that was the biggest um, sort of motivation because while everybody said these things to me, and I remember being a youngster, uh, probably in the space of what these athletes are at one point in time, and these just seem big words, but Everybody said, this is what you have to do. These are the rules. But nobody really told me how to do it. And over the years, of course, um, you know, we did figure that out. And I'll just maybe give you a couple of examples of, of uh, what I did. And maybe it could help the youngsters as well. Um, I think practice, what you do in practice is extremely, extremely important. So give your practice a much more importance than you are currently. Uh, I know you all are working very hard and training very hard. And the reason why I'm saying give it importance is because, um, you know, what you do in practice really is what uh, is figured, you know, or sort of replaced or represented when you're playing uh, a tournament. So um, I think put your head down in practice. Observe the very small nitty gritty things that you do. Um, 
and if there are any doubts and questions clear them at practice and after all that work extremely hard push yourself a little more and a little more each day and that's how you will get better so um, i think this is what stands out initially at least and just because we're starting off the discussion i would say um, it's not practice that makes you perfect but perfect practice that makes you perfect so make sure your practice is perfect ma'am ma'am you asked uh, you, you raised a very important uh, statement over here but at the same time i have a question for you like in in modern day sports uh, whether you are participating in domestic level or in international level it's always important to become consistent and we all know like you used to be a a benchmark of consistency throughout your career won nine time nationals equaling the record of none other than the prakash the great prakash padukone what would be your tip of advice to all the budding badminton players or athletes whoever is playing wherever in which uh, whichever in fact uh, discipline of sport that particular individual is playing with what should be uh, the tips from from your side to become consistent so i think consistency really again um, where there's consistent effort i think the effort has to be consistent um, your goal will keep changing um because as you progress in the sport that changes but the effort stays um very very consistent and then along with that i think it's all about finding sort of solutions when you go you know go along the way so sometimes you know when you're playing like say for badminton for example if there were certain tournaments where you required um you know to have more strength because the shuttles were going to be slow then that's what you need to work on and if there are, there are certain tournaments where say you know the opponent is going to be attacking much more then make sure you work on your defense a little more so it's also about planning and strategy and it's about moving your goals as you move along but it's also the fact that the effort and i'll come back to my point to say that effort is not only the effort you put on court when you're playing uh, you know tournaments but it's effort that you put into your practice sessions be it you know be it when you're actually doing strength training be it when you're doing your running be it when you're doing you know on court activities when you're doing your stretching um, when you're doing your meditation whatever is connected to the sport and even when you're resting i think anything that's connected to the sport you've got to put in your 100% effort so yeah uh, pratik so 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 now that you have mentioned about you know practice uh practice doesn't make a man perfect perfect practice makes perfect right uh now we when we compare about indian sports and you know european sports and maybe african sports uh we see that uh there there's a very uh, uh renowned word or you can say term which we use uh, nowadays is train the trainer program right now in order to uh, uh perfectly practice um um do you need proper trainers as well and the coaches as well so do you think that uh, our trainers are now uh, compared to previous uh, stages are are doing better in terms of you know uh, giving their uh, lessons or do we lack this train the trainer program in india you know um, you know train the trainer and and programs have picked up speed in india people are taking it very seriously there there are a lot of programs that are happening and you know it goes without saying that if if an athlete is coached well there are higher chances that the performance is going to be better so there's no question about that and and if an at, if a coach has to coach the athlete well the more up, upgraded and updated he is about what is happening it's just going to be an advantage right so yes that becomes very important but also the fact that it's it's a uh, coaching or actually getting performance in sport is how well the coach and the athlete really sings together and and what their understanding is and i'll say this because i presume there are a lot of athletes listening to this to say that the feedback you give the coach you know the amount of honesty with which you deal and you interact with the coach becomes very very important because a coach cannot really look inside your head or look inside your heart to see what you're feeling or what you're thinking it's what you tell him or her is what they're going to work with and then put in their expertise to that and help you get better so your feedback your trust in the coach you know how honest you are 
these things become very very important and together as a team that's when performances will come may have a question like this is something related to your career as well like uh down 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 the memory lane i mean your highlights of the achievements in in your career have been i mean you participated in two olympics uh, one asian games uh silver medal in world junior championships in in 1996 i'm not too wrong and then four medals in three uh, commonwealth games appearances and you also uh, achieved your career highest ranking of 16 so if you feel go back and if i if i request you to pick and choose the top three achievements of your career what would be your one two three um a little hard uh, to pick but i will try uh, so i think my three favorite achievements would be one would be the world junior championships in 1996 because that was my first big international success and um, before that nobody in india had got a medal at the world junior championships so um i became the first indian to do so and to reach the finals after playing seven rounds of of badminton with you know we were i mean absolutely not prepared i we had gone with two sets of sports kits which means to play two rounds and to actually get to the finals uh, that's how the preparation was so it was such a fun tournament um and and yeah standing on the podium and getting a silver you know representing india and all that was very exciting so that would be one the second would be the 1998 commonwealth games where again i got a silver medal again the first you know women singles player to do so um, and it was just such a great tournament because in the semi finals i was down a uh, 09 uh, in the third game and from there on coming out winning that match and then reaching the finals and again my first commonwealth games and we had a great team spirit going and um, the indian team also won a bronze in the team event so i came home with two medals so it was individual success and team success so again very special for me and um, the third i would pick would be my ninth consecutive national title um, where i beat saina nehwal in the finals and um, i had a very bad wrist injury and you know there was just so much pressure on me on two counts one is the record because had i won the ninth one it would have equaled my mentor prakash padukone's uh, national record but more uh, what gave me more pressure was really the fact that i didn't know whether i would be able to sustain playing the entire tournament because my wrist was so bad so i think just coming out on top after those challenges and it was my last national championships that i participated in so it was a great closure of a career for me and um, yes yeah, so i think these three Uh, would be very special yeah before before pratik asks this question i can't resist myself in asking that question i think the last incident which you said it was back in january 2006 and at the point of time uh saina nehwal was just 15 and you were 27 yeah. did you spot it at the point of time like that little saina 15 years of age can go that distance and can shock the world that india can lead to that level in olympic sport as well um so i think a lot of credit to her because she was extremely hard working i think you know when we've seen so many players in in our career and uh, she definitely stood out in terms of her work ethic um, very gritty very fearless um, very ambitious um, and then you know her combination uh, with polela gopichand as a coach i think together it was an ideal combination and they really made things work for them did i think that she would get to world number 1 probably not but you know if you ask me did you think that she will succeed um it was a definite yes pradeep so i mean uh, looking back back at your success and, and the kind of run that you had uh, with the national championships right uh, so once you got that first win i mean was it more of a pressure for you to kind of go back and form it uh, back again and won the second and third and then fourth and fifth and then so on was it a, was it a pressure or did and then by that time or did you enjoy, started enjoying the game what made you kind of win back to back nine titles yeah so i'll just go back a little bit i started playing badminton at the age of 8 right and um, i played my first national championships at the age of 11 which was the under 12 
uh, category and I won that national championships. Um, and thereafter, when I played the under 15, I won two years there. And then in the under 19, I won four years there and then nine consecutive senior national titles. So basically in a span of 17 years, I won 16 titles and that one title I was runners up. So when I was 12, I was runners up in the under 15. And um, so I think throughout my career, right from the age of 11, it's always been the national championships that's been my target. And uh, it was so because at, at that point in time, the way things worked was if you were national champion, you would be selected in the national team to represent India. And if you weren't national champion, then there was a possibility that they would drop you from the team. So my goal was always to win the nationals. And once you start winning, then you automatically become the target, right? So you're always the one to beat. And um, I remember when I had already won three or four senior national titles, my coach used to always tell me, he said, you, you are thinking there's pressure on you. What about me? So I used to say, why do you say that, sir? So he would tell me that, you know, if I make you win another national title, nobody's going to give me credit. But if you lose, then everybody's going to blame me. So he's saying, don't even think about your pressure. Think about my pressure. And now you go and train, you know. So it was just that that kind of a situation. But yeah, I, I will say that there was a lot of um, pressure, but it was also fun because it kept me on my toes it kept me motivated and it kept me pushing to be better so you know there was absolutely no room to sit back and relax not even at a single point in time and there were some decisions that i had to make along the way um, which i made gladly people call them sacrifices they're not they're just decisions and i'm glad i made those tough decisions and managed to get the number of national titles that i did well man we have a lot of uh you know, comments and questions uh, from, the, from the viewers who are watching this show. Before going to that, I have a question. Like, you just mentioned about your first title when you were just under 12 level back in 1989, actually. If you if you just go and, and see the circle of your career, 2006, uh, that same venue, Bangalore, uh, when we won that ninth national title consecutively. So... How special is Bangalore to you in terms of a happy hunting place, actually? You know, Bangalore for me is extremely special because, as you said, I started my career from there. It was my first national title. Um, it's also so that particular nationals in 1989 was actually organized by Prakash Padukone, you know, and his team. And mm -hmm. uh, I have this very uh, sweet photograph of mine, you know, at the tournament you know, with him um, when I was just all of 11 years old. And I remember him, you know, telling me that you're playing really well and, you know, you you have a future ahead, stay focused and, and all those good things, right? Um, and then after my 10th standard, I actually shifted to Bangalore to train under him. So that was like a dream come true because it was India's first private badminton academy that he set up, you know, along with Vimal Kumar and... Uh, I moved out of home uh, when I was just 16 years old, right after my 10 standard exams. And the training that I got there and the life that I lived there on my own, I think those were my growing years, pretty much. Um, I sort of was exposed to a lot of uh, badminton training and fitness, more tended towards international badminton. Um, also, you know, at a personal level, made a lot of friends there. Um, it, it was a time where I had my own vehicle, so I was exploring the city also. And uh, it, it was just so much fun. Um, and we used to train seven days a week, you know, in Bangalore. So Sundays used to be a special uh, training session. We used to run one hour every, every Sunday morning. So I think those memories are very, very special. And then to come back and win my ninth national title again in Bangalore, um, I think it was a great, like it completes the circle for me. And um, yeah, I mean, I'll always have special memories of the place. Well, Pratik, I'd be requesting you to, to take the comments one by one. First, I mean, Devankur Saha, hello, ma'am, big fan. Prerna Basu, uh, very inspiring. And then K. Rajvi has a question. Uh, Pratik. So uh, he, he says he's asking, one should practice smartly or practice hard. So uh, up to you. 
Um, I think both, because uh, you know, there's there's one thing that practicing hard uh, is non-negotiable. You have to practice hard. But if you don't practice smart while you're practicing hard, you could land up in trouble. So basically, you got to be very clear as to what you want to achieve, how you want to achieve it. And um, as I said, you know, a little while earlier, be very mindful when you're training, because sometimes if you're uncomfortable, and when I say that, I mean, you know, sometimes you're doing a particular routine or a technique where that is maybe affecting your shoulder or your knee or anything, then don't push that very hard because then there, there is a problem. There's an issue. So stop right there and find another way to achieve what you're trying to achieve. So um, if you're going to push really hard, but towards the wrong direction, then you're going to land up in trouble. And that's when you have to work smart. So I think an ideal combination is a both. And um, again, you know, when you're playing, see, playing competition is your ultimate goal. So whatever you require to do well in the competition or win, that is what your focus should be on when you're practicing. And it shouldn't be different. Sometimes I've seen a lot of people do different things in practice and then expect themselves to do something different in a tournament. That's not going to happen. So make sure that alignment is there. Figure out what your goals are and then work very, very hard. Aisha Begum has written, so well said about having an expert mentor to guide and counsel a budding athlete. Yes, uh, Pratik, you were supposed to say something. Uh, with due respect to uh, all your achievements and, and whatever you have done to inspire uh, you know, youngsters, do you, do you think at this current moment of time uh, with, with the enhancement of technology, uh, coaching experts and, uh, and, and whatever it is, uh, you would have done much, I mean, uh, you would have done better than what you have done? Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to believe that because, um, I mean, so many things have changed in the ecosystem. So it's not only the tech, it's just all round sort of um, everything's gotten better. And that's the way it should be. And that's the way, I mean, I got much more than the players before me did. So that's just how things work. But yeah, it's much more organized now. So just to give you an example, um, the maximum number of tournaments that we were allowed to play in a year or we could play in a year was eight. Um, and today the players are playing up to, you know, 16 to 20 tournaments a year. And that makes a big, big difference um, to, to your world rankings, right? So that is one. And also otherwise the, the ancillary support you get, you know, be it physio, be it nutrition, be it mental training, you know, be it mentorship, um, be it guidance. So, you know, when we went for the, when I went for the Olympics in 2000, literally we learned on the job. Once we got there, then we started figuring things out. Achha, this is how it works. This is where the dining hall is. This is where the village looks. This is what the village looks like. This is how we have to, you know, manage, you know, our, our, uh, whatever protocols need to be there. But it's not so for the athletes today. They're much more prepared. And um, I will say this like across the board, even for the players before my generation, they were very talented players like they were in my generation as well. Um, but the preparation differs. So the better prepared you are, the better you will perform. It's actually quite simple. Ma'am, if you just go back to your career, I mean, the year 1996 uh, for me uh, was was uh, one of the finest seasons you had in your career. Like, you know, you won the bronze medal at the Prince Session Junior Championships at Hong Kong. Later that year, I mean, you won the silver medal at the World Junior Championships at uh, uh, Silkeborg, Denmark. Then, I mean, it was also happened to be first medal for India in that particular event. So, and, and then... You know, you also retained your junior national title in under-19 level. Uh, you were the finalist at the senior national set held at Pune. You represented India at the Uber Cup as well. If you see, go back to that particular year in 1996, do you think that your title over there, in the bronze medal, I mean, not the title, but the bronze medal over there in the Hong Kong uh, tournament over there, in the Prince Asian Junior Championship, helped you to, to uh, accelerate your career? Uh, to where it finished uh, down the line? Um, yes, uh, to a large extent uh, it did. But see, the Prince Asian Junior, see, when when at the time we were playing, now we weren't sent for so many junior tournaments. It's very unlike what 
the juniors in badminton get today we would literally play one tournament every alternate year so i actually played the world junior championships in 94 as well um and 92 as well so this was my third world junior championships um and after that so it would just be these three and then the prince asian junior so i literally played four junior tournaments over a span of what six years so mm -hmm. that's what our exposure was like now at the prince junior um the girl i lost to i remember she was from chinese taipei and um, i you know it was a tough match because she is a very tricky opponent and we hadn't seen these players at all before right because we didn't we never used to play junior tournaments but um, getting the bronze medal nobody really spoke about it it was very quiet came back to india continued training um and then after that when the world juniors happened and when i looked at my draw i actually had to play her again you know i think it was in the in the pre quarter finals and uh, i beat her in three games you know a very close third game sort of uh, you know win so it's it's all about actually just see the tournament achievement gives you confidence but parallelly also the kind of players you're beating to get that achievement gives you a lot of confidence so the confidence comes from like having lost to her at the prince asian juniors to then beating her at the world juniors so i i always felt that i was getting better and the moment you have that feeling the motivation stays you train harder and then once you train harder better performances are going to follow so i think that's how it went along and i i must also say this that that year when i reached the finals of the senior nationals actually um i had won a lot of the all india ranking tournaments in the seniors that year and it was only the nationals that i went and lost so it's not always very very pretty you know life has its ways to keep you in check and i was very very upset so the same thing had happened to me the previous year i reached the senior national finals when i was 16 and i lost and then again when i was whatever 17 and it's the year difference so maybe um, the age is a one year here and there but that year again i lost so it was two years of losing in the finals of the senior nationals and i was like not again you know i got better but this one tournament it's not happening and then i think that jinx had to be broken in year 3 so that's the next year I, i won and then won for 9 years straight so yes 1996 was almost all good except for that one uh, national final loss in the senior nationals um, but i guess that that's okay what uh, what was the reason of, of what was the reason of coming back i mean in the third year after you know having a tough two years which you are saying how did you come back what i mean what routine did you uh, Uh, follow in the third year, you can manage to uh, win, or was it uh, the same routine uh, which was not giving you the result initially, but later on it it it, it gave gave you the result. I I think it was quite simple. I was I was a junior and I was playing the senior category, so there were few things based on experience that I was missing out on. I don't think it was anything really to do with my game or with my practice. organization of my practice or anything the first senior nationals i lost in the finals i lost 11 8 in the third game in you know so that was very very close then in pune again i went and lost to you know somebody who had been national champion you know 2 3 years before so <clears throat> i think it was just me being a junior playing seniors and uh, i think that was one of the reasons why it never affected me as much as it should have um yes i was very upset i really wanted to win and losing is not easy but i always knew that it just needed that little bit of adjustment and that adjustment would happen um, you know as i just played played on more and yeah and when i played my senior nationals in hyderabad which was my first uh, senior national title um, in the semi finals i twisted my ankle and the day of the finals it was very very painful uh, the morning when i went to actually have a hit on the court and uh, i couldn't run very well and my coach actually sat me down and he said look i don't care how much pain you are in um you have to win this and that is it that's all that was my brief you know before the match he said i don't care just play through the pain do whatever you want but you have to win this and um, 
you know that's what i could i could manage so i think that's where it all started from so, during during this two years i mean uh, what was the reaction of your parents because uh, i personally believe that you know uh, parents play the major role in uh, at least in india right so uh, were they supportive or, or did you have to fight your way up uh, what was it no i think my parents were extremely supportive um, because they probably realized that the happiest i was uh, was when i came home after playing badminton and then for any parent if they see their kid being happy uh, and for me it was not even happy it was like so 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 happy um, i used to i used to just love playing badminton so um, i don't think there was any opposition that i faced per se but yes my parents did face a lot of opposition from relatives and you know people around and saying what are you doing why are you let taking her to the club every day and you know they had to sacrifice their social life they were financial strains and and all that but they never let it reach me and that is why i could play freely and um, i think my only promise you know to myself and keeping them in mind was you know work as hard as you can don't ever shirk your hard work keep that up be very honest love the sport as much as you can and uh, just just keep it up keep going and irrespective of the results i uh, just enjoy what you are doing so that was like an internal sort of promise to myself um but that was also for my family well well personally if i if i ask you like which gave you more lessons your success rates or the failures um the failures without a doubt i mean the failures come to mind uh, you know if you ask me where did you learn what you learned from where did you gain your experience from it'll always be the failures um so that goes without saying i mean and and that's when it also hurts but it also sticks in your head and there there are few instances and i'll give you a small example um when i was 13 years old uh, i was playing an all india senior ranking tournament at the bombay gymkhana and it, i was playing the junior national champion um and the first game the score was i think something like 8 nine or something like that oh, no 8 10 i was trailing 8 uh, 10 and it that at that point was a game of 11 so um, she served and i took a judgment on the service and the shuttle fell in and the game was over and uh, after the match got over i lost obviously and then after the match was over my coach just asked me she he said what were you thinking saying why did you judge that shuttle did you not realize that she was on game point you know even if you had a fraction of a doubt you should have still played the shuttle and let the rally play on and um, that's something that stuck in my head and it might seem small it might seem it was literally like one second worth right i judged the shuttle falls and it could have easily been forgotten but it wasn't um and and i think these are the kind of learnings you accumulate like small 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 learnings and then in you know for the rest of your career instances like this will crop up but then you know what to do about it um because you remember the pain that you felt then correct so that sticks with uh, pratik so we have a we have a question again from uh, k raj b uh, he is he is trying to find out how important is to have a right diet for athletes uh, badminton taekwondo and cricket all are very demanding games and it might take a toll on the athlete what should be a good diet and recovery plan for a professional athlete um i think it's extremely important uh, because what basically your diet gives you the fuel um to train and uh, without that you're putting undue pressure on your body and then your body if it's not given the right kind of nutrition will break down step by step so um to get better performances to keep yourself healthy um diet is extremely important i mean it's very generic for me to say uh, you know what a good diet would be like i think there's a lot of there's a lot of information on the internet and there's a lot of nutritionists that you can seek guidance from but um, i will say it's not only the diet but it's also your sleep that's extremely important and the amount you rest so hydration uh, nutrition sleep and of course then your training Uh, I have a question. Like back in two thousand, 
um, you you participated in your first ever Summer Olympics actually in, in Sydney. Um, of course, back in 2004, it was once again uh, a memorable uh, World Cup, uh, I mean Olympics for you in in uh, Greece. I think it was in Athens, and and you lost in the pre quarter final uh, against the eventual silver medalist of of uh, that event. And and more importantly, uh, you lost in three games. And uh, if I'm not too wrong, it was Mia Odina uh, uh, who was your uh, you know antagonist over there so if you just go back and judge your career over here so first olympic is always special but do you think that the first olympics helped you to become a better player uh, in the later part of your career um i i think definitely because um as i mentioned a little while earlier <laughs> i think the olympics um the first time we went we were just completely overall we were underprepared, not in badminton terms as much, but in general terms, because we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what an Olympics was like. And um, it's very different from the other tournaments that you play out on tour, because it's, um, needless to say, it's much, much bigger. But also there are some very definite protocols that you have to follow, and the rules are different. So I think we were always very scared to actually um get out and be ourselves and at the same time there's also this pressure of saying it is the olympics now you have to perform now this is the time and you know all that and then um so i don't think people say like i really enjoyed my first olympics like i i won't say that i really enjoyed my first olympics because i'm always so tense and so worried about so many things and um so that came and went but of course the olympics uh, in 2004 at athens i was much more at ease um, I more or less knew what was going to happen. And uh, yeah, I, I think I was also better prepared in terms of um, badminton because for the 2000 Olympics, I qualified very late. Um, so I didn't have enough preparation time, but in uh, in 2000, so in 2004, it was better. And uh, yeah, I think I played a good match against Mia Odina and uh, it, it was special because she she is a top top class player she's somebody whose game that i really enjoyed watching and to play against her and take a game of her was uh, great and especially at the olympics do you, do you envy the facilities uh, indian athletes get these days uh, before participating in the olympic compared to your time um i wouldn't say envy but i'm really glad that they're getting what they get because uh, for all these years, we've grumbled and we've cried and we've shouted and we've screamed and said, you know, if this was there, you know, we could be give somebody help us with this or, you know, you know, now we are stuck. Now, what do we do? You know, that kind of situation. So uh, we felt very helpless um, and frustrated at certain times. But I'm glad that the players today um, are not feeling uh, that as much and, and they're getting the kind of respect and the recognition and the regard that they should. Pratik, uh, Nisha has a question. Uh, so Nisha Singh has a question and, and she is trying to ask, uh, what sacrifices did you have to make while growing up to be where you are today? Ah, so, um, you know, again, sacrifices for me is, is not the word I would use, but the choices that I made along the way. And for some, it would mean sacrifices. I think as a child, I was pretty much on a very strict uh, routine because it was school in the mornings and then it was straight to practice badminton and then come back, you know, get ready, dinner, you know, and then sit to do homework till midnight. And then next morning again, you get up, go to school. Um, so that was a, a very strict regimented routine. Um, also, I used to play seven days a week. So even Sundays, I was at the badminton court. In fact, played extra on Sundays because the courts were more free. Um, on that day so yeah there was there were no friends there were no parties there were no movies um there was no you know festival celebrated you know birthdays were also at the badminton court so it, it was that kind of uh, a choice that i made but i mean i wouldn't have it any other way because i loved to be at the badminton court and i loved to play so it was a choice i made there um and then again when i was 16 when i moved out of home to shift, uh, you know, to the Prakash Padukone Badminton Academy in Bangalore. Um, I 
stayed on my own, which means I, you know, left my family behind in Mumbai and stayed on my own for 13 years. So, yeah, I think in a way, letting go of my time with family could be considered as a sacrifice. But again, it was a very clear goal that if I needed to get better and achieve what I did, I needed to move out of Mumbai. Uh, so I did that. And um, yeah, I think even when I was in Bangalore, again, there were choices that you had to make. There were uh, so every year our national championships would be in January. And come 31st December, there was talk of parties and, you know, going out and things like that. And there's not a single year that I went out on 31st. In fact, in spite of being there, you know, people come in calling you. You lose, actually, a lot of times you lose friends because they keep calling you, say, come celebrate with us. And I said, no, badminton. And then after a point, they stop calling you. So you, you sort of lose out on all that um, just because you're so focused on what you're doing. But uh, yeah, I lived a very boring existence, if you could call it that. But again, it was a choice, uh, you know, not a sacrifice. And I think that's just how it is. Ma'am, we know you're very busy. So last three questions, uh, actually. We'll be taking one more question from Kiraj. It's like, especially now we have so many artificial supplements available. How should an athlete choose what's right and what's wrong? Um, you know, great question. I think uh, it's the, the safest way to do it would be to go to somebody, um, you know, who can advise you well, somebody you trust, somebody who has, uh, you know, that kind of experience and expertise to do so, because it's just such a large field. Um, and for me to comment on what is good and what is not would, um, you know, be not be something that I will be able to do. But I'll just say that just find the right guidance when you take these supplements because um yeah then they're, they're not always what they seem like um and and at the same time i'll also say this that they can be very helpful um for your career so just get the right supplement you know take it in the right manner but get the right guidance Pratik. So we'll take we'll take this question. I, even I wanted to ask this question. So do you have any special preparations while you are uh, representing the country? Uh, I, I would again refer to K Raj B's question. What was your diet or protein regime when you were training on playing for the nation? So not just the diet. I mean, any other special uh, sessions you had you 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 were having uh, while playing for the nations or during the Olympics or was it the same routine which you were uh, following? Um, so. You know, it, it's a good question. And if I could have had a special routine, I would have. Um, and I'll just say this from the point of view that when, when I was playing, we honestly did not know too much of what the conditions abroad would be like. Um, and when I say that, I mean in terms of how the shuttle, the speed of the shuttle, how it would be moving, how big the courts would be and things like that. So um, for us to actually have targeted preparation for particular tournaments, well, that wasn't happening. Um, I guess... We could say that we were a little more uh, careful with our training because at that point you don't want to get injured. Um, you know, you don't want to be doing something drastically different to what you have been doing. So that is something that we would look at. But um, in in terms of diet, uh, again, you know, at our time there was absolutely no um, advice or any expertise given to us as far as nutrition was concerned. I was I remember growing up just being told. Make sure you stay away from spicy and oily food. Uh, don't eat deep fried things. Make sure you have a balanced diet. Make sure you drink enough water. So these were the kind of general advice that was given to us and nothing else. And when we went for the tournaments, it was always like, how much you know, daily allowance do you have? What is the nearest restaurant? Can we afford to eat it? So <laughs> invariably, we would land up in a McDonald's. Now, was that the right thing to eat? Definitely not. But that's just the way it was at, at that point in time. So, um, no, nothing special. Though having, you know, a special preparation for tournaments that are targeted to that particular tournament is definitely helpful. And now the athletes manage to do that. So, Do you still so, play? Hmm? Uh, do you still yeah, play? I, I, I play. I, I won't comment to say how well, but yes, I play. <laughs> Uh, I, I have uh, another question before. I think, uh, Pratik, do you have uh, 
one more question to ask yes so uh, yeah. i was coming to uh, so, uh, your uh, initiative uh, you had adopted the uh, one women's team i guess in assam right um, i came to know about it last year um, what exactly is this and and how is it um, you know uh, because women's sports is kind of uh, coming up uh, so what exactly you are doing with that if you if can understand so this is actually the brahmaputra volleyball league and it's um, one of our ex uh, captains of the indian team the volleyball team abhijit bhattacharya who has set this whole thing up um, along with his team and it's a grassroots rural volleyball league so basically the several districts of assam that have fielded their teams and they've come up uh, with this great concept of home and away matches and uh, it this is the second year that it has happened and in year 1 also had adopted a team and in in year 2 as well and uh, it's just phenomenal the amount of success that the league has had and the impact it has had on the community so um, it's not only on the girls but on the boys as well because the boys and girls team in in the in the league and it's just been you know transformation where um, not only the kids are coming out and playing but it's also the entire village Uh, that's actually supporting the league in terms of, you know, organizing, actually laying out the court, make uh, cooking the meals themselves, and getting involved in the whole process. So it's been um, a grassroots league that has impacted community in a huge way in Assam. It's a it's a very historic. Why I asked you this question? It's a very historic day for us because Mohammedan sporting. I mean, uh, Sumanta might give you a. Um, uh, brief about it. Uh, Mohammedan sporting is coming up. I mean, playing their first uh, women's uh, cricket match today, right? So uh, and the club has won it by 19 runs. Uh, oh, awesome! To all the viewers, yes. <laughs> awesome! Congratulations. So it's so a historic it's, day indeed. Yes. Excellent to have you on the same day uh, when when a, one of our associations are doing good. Yeah. Chamanda, please. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very very special day. So in fact. Uh, before wrapping up this particular show uh, there's no better uh, i mean uh, women's athlete uh, than you actually you can have a have a have a tip of advice to all the players who participated uh, in uh, you know byju's women's t20 blast over there in in, in today's game with women women's sporting and rajasthan so i mean congratulatory message from you would be just tying on the cake No, I think fantastic achievement, huge congratulations, and keep it up. Um, and we look forward to much more success from you in in the future. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was this was lovely hosting you over here. I think uh, Pratik will also have the same feeling as well. It's wonderful to talk with a legend like you, who served Indian sports to such a height where we can proudly say yes. Indian ladies can take the sport to a higher level, and it's it's not just about badminton, ma'am. You inspire the nation uh, in all disciplines as well. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks for joining again, and hope you'll be getting you in future as well. Thank I, you I would, so much. I would like to I would like to end this session with with one thing. I was in Latour last week, and while I was uh, so they they are very heavy in terms of badminton. They are growing uh, uh, very heavily in terms of badminton. So I was talking to one of these schools. and they were like ki uh, aap apartment ji ko jante hain kya uh, <laughs> so i was like <laughs> so so they are also planning to expand uh, badminton and they said that we would like to have someone who can professionalize the game and all those things so i mean she she inspires uh, not only you know any specific region but the entire nation and and this speaks absolutely that, absolutely that's great to hear thank thank you for the kind words guys thank you thank you thank you, thank you, thank you so thank much ma'am pleasure having you yeah thank you so much great being here thank you cheers